Welcome back. This time we're going to build a Stratocaster. A Stratocaster like this. Now this is one I made a couple of years ago. Uh, the body I bought off of uh, eBay, or I might have bought it from a company called Boo Boo Guitars, I'm not sure. Um, but it was um, it was completely bare. It was just wood. Uh, I didn't have to strip a finish off that. The neck I actually already had. Um, I bought a load of necks a long time ago and gradually I'm working my way through them. So what I do is I strip them off completely right back to the wood. I refinish them. I reprofile them as well. And then I make them up properly to the body. You've got to make this joint work. It's not going to work automatically. Um, then it's a question of finishing and uh, the hardware. Now the hardware is something I get asked about a lot and also where I get these parts from. So let's talk about that first. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but the seasons seem to come around so quickly now. The garden is blooming once again and everybody's gone vegetarian. Even the cat seems to have gone vegetarian. Brando seems to spend most days chewing away at some form of greenery. Try a salad, I say to him, try a salad. But he says no thanks and wanders off. So enough of me showing you lovely pictures of my lovely garden and my lovely cat, and it's time to get down to the workshop and get on with building the Stratocaster that we've been hearing so much about. I wonder who's in the workshop today? Gosh, it's warm in here. My, how the seasons change. I'm just gonna pop this off, mostly for continuity, of course. Right. Hardware. Well, if you're gonna build a guitar, you're gonna need a neck. Now, I'm very lucky. I had a lot of these necks left over from the previous project. I've literally got a box full of them. But what I do is I strip all the finish off and I tear all the frets out because I didn't like these necks very much. Uh, they were made to a specification that I had at the time and that specification um, lapsed in my mind. So I decided to do them differently, but it's quite fun. I mean, I reprofile the necks, I make them slimmer. Um, sometimes I make them a little bit more rounded. I wanted them quite flat before. I tear all the frets out because the frets that they supplied were awful and uh, I prefer the sort of banjo wire fender um, sort of classic ones. So that's my neck. This is the body I'm going to be using. I got this one in the UK from a company called Boo Boo Guitars. Now what they do is they sell off the rejects. The beauty of this is they, they make really beautiful guitar bodies, but when they go wrong, they flog them off. They flog them off cheap, well worth looking out for. I mean, this is a lovely ash body. To buy this wood would cost way more than this cost. I think I paid about 80 bucks for this or something like that. Silly money, and it's a, a beautiful body. It's just got a few defects which they've, um, they've marked out. Here, there's a knot here, there's a knot here. There's a knot here. I mean, who cares about knots? If you're going to put solid color on it, it's, it's of no concern whatsoever. So look out for reject bodies. Failing that, you know, scan eBay for other people's abandoned projects. There's a lot of them, I can assure you. Uh, or buy an old Squire or, you know, just think about it. You'll come up with some way of getting a decent body. This is the one I'm going to be using. Now there's going to be multifarious or multiferous, multiferous, multiple other bits and pieces you're going to need. You know, this is a jack socket, for instance. The bridge and plate here are actually original fender parts. I don't know why, but this particular company seems to be selling these actual proper fender spares off really quite cheap. Beautiful bridge, fender. I bought this a few years ago, fully loaded. It's, um, you know, from AliExpress in China, and it's a, a really nice quality piece of kit. The pickups that came with it had these sort of long bar Alnico magnets, which you must avoid. You want the individual pole ones like this. Um, this has got some lovely linen wrapped cables. The middle pickup is pole reversed. You want that. This switch I will replace, terrible. And these tiny little pots, absolutely dreadful get rid of them i'll put some full-size cts style pots in there instead but that's a really nice scratch plate and i love the color it's um it, it's the right color for a sort of uh, slightly antique guitar wonderful now if you've seen any of my previous builds you will know i love a balance together and i love a balance together because you learn so much i'm going to put this down now see if i can keep it all together there we go. You learn so much from a balance together. You know what the guitar is roughly going to look like when it's finished and whether you're going to like it or not. That's really important. But what you also find is um, what fits and what doesn't. And unfortunately, although the Stratocaster appears to be some sort of de facto standard, 
the parts are made in different countries to slightly different specs. There's sort of a Japanese spec, a Chinese spec, and an American spec, and even a Mexico spec. They can be slightly different depending on what they're trying to emulate, what era of guitar they're emulating. Now this I'm going to turn into a sort of 54 style um, Fender Stratocaster, hence the maple neck. Uh, the body, I might go for a solid colour, I'm not sure, it all depends on how the repairs go. But this is basically how the guitar looks, and it looks so close to the final thing that the temptation is to screw it all together, stick some strings on it, and start playing. When you look at those guitars, they're usually an absolute mess. And the reason they're an absolute mess is they just don't fit together properly because the neck socket may be slightly sloppy. It might not fit the guitar neck that's been put into it. The scratch plate may not be centered on the body correctly. The bridge may be off center, therefore the strings are not going central down the neck. The neck may be off center in itself, so it's not going straight through across the poles of the pickups to the bridge in the right position and the dimensions of the neck may not actually fit the dimensions of the bridge, which is a disaster. So let's start with the body. The body is a lovely body, it's in great condition, but it isn't finished. They obviously abandoned the manufacture of this body uh, once they spotted the, the flaws, um, so it hasn't had any form of even intermediate or fine sanding. So I think we need to take it to that stage. Um, I'm going to collect the dust from that so that I can mix it with some adhesive and fill some of these holes. So I don't know this piece of wood. Now, that sounds weird, but I'm not acquainted with this piece of wood. I don't know how it's going to handle sanding at all. So I've just got myself some of my favourite Stick It um, 3M Stick It sandpaper, and I'm just going to stick a little bit on my hand because it's self-adhesive and it doesn't fall off. And I'm just going to give it a little light sand. The point of this is I'm just going to get to know this piece of wood a bit so that I can sort of begin to predict what's going to happen when I start to sand it. Now, as I suspected, it's actually very soft. Uh, and it sands really nicely and actually quite quickly. This stuff is really abrasive and very hard um, and incredibly adaptable. So all I'm gonna do is go over it at the moment and just try and get rid of some of those really bad uh, tool marks. <laughs> One of the things which I can't stress enough, wear a mask when you're sanding. If this stuff gets into your lungs, it's really serious. Um, I've been doing it too long and I've inhaled far too much dust and I can feel it. Wear a mask, don't be like me. The other thing, be like me. When you're working on something like this, when you're shaping, use your hands all the time. Keep touching it, keep feeling it. It is by far the best way of knowing what you have to do and how well it's going and how much needs to come off. Your hands are incredible at this and they're a really vital part of this process. So keep touching it, keep working out what you need to do. That's really rough there, <laughs> I need to do that bit. Sanding is really uh, perilous. You've got to be very careful to use the right tool for the right sort of sanding. If you uh, are trying to sand something flat, don't use something like this. Use a block. A block will keep it nice and flat. If you're trying to do really complicated curves, use your hands, because you can get right in there and you can feel what's going on. If you're trying to do something which has got a little bit of a mixture of both like this, these blocks are great. It's 
really no skimping on things like this. It's hard work uh, and it takes a while. But the uh, effort that you put in at this point pays off dividends in the final guitar. There's nothing worse than painting a guitar, getting it all finished up and in your hands and then going, oh, I wish I'd knocked that corner off or why did I make that so rounded? Um, get it right at this stage. Mask on. The strangest thing about building a parts caster is you start with what feels like a very finished guitar. Now what I do is I start off with, uh, for instance, a neck that I bought online and I actually haven't actually undone this one before. So this is a neck that I had made some time ago and it feels like a lovely neck, but I, there are things about it I don't like. What I don't like is the colour, I think it's awful, and it's also quite thick and chunky, and I want something that with a bit more finesse. I want this completely different, so I'm going to take everything off this neck and take it right back to the wood uh, and build it the way that I want it. I go in with a pair of nice clippers like this, and I go in and I squeeze and I just bend it back very slightly. slide this little strip underneath it to protect the wood and then carry on and I use a bending back sort of cantilever move and then believe it or not it works best if you bend it towards the wider bit that you've already lifted like this and that's the fret out and hopefully it won't leave too much damage And just like that, no frets. Um, that technique has taken me quite a few uh, years to perfect. Um, it's really easy. It's all based on leverage, as you've probably noticed. Anyway, we have no frets. So what do we do next? Well, we want to get this awful finish off. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is with a cabinet scraper. I've tried uh, using um, sandpaper and uh, powered sanders, and all that really achieves is to fill the workshop and my lungs with dust, and that's not a good thing. So cabinet scraper. Now, you may or may not be familiar with cabinet scrapers. Cabinet scrapers are literally a piece of metal, a bit of hard steel. Um, you sharpen them up by, by using a, a tool that just flattens and creates a burr at the top. Um, an amazing tool, much overlooked. I'd never used one until I went to college to study guitar making. And now I, I just keep coming up with new uses for them. Um, learn how to use a cabinet scraper and I'll show you how. To sharpen a scraper, just use your favourite sharpening block and a block of wood like this just to hold it vertical. Pop it in a vise, then it'll just need a few strokes with a burnishing tool, a piece of really hard metal. I know some people use their favourite heavy screwdriver. Sharp as a razor. What it does is it creates a burr on these two sides as you roll that piece of hard steel, the burnishing tool down it, the burnishing actually causes a burr over the edges here. So you end up with two really sharp cutting and scraping surfaces. Scrapers are just amazing. You can get off so much so quickly. Some people think I cheat, um, which I would never do, but uh, you can see that very quickly you can get to the desired result. Once we've got it in this raw state, we can set about making those changes that we talked about. You can use a radiusing beam to start uh, sorting out this top fretboard radius. It may be too shallow for you, it may be too rounded, it may be too flat, but you can sort that out. You can also use your cabinet scraper and any other tools that you feel you, you might want to use. You can start to change the neck profile. It's always good to have a template when you're doing this because, you know, this can get away with you quite quickly. But the great thing about a scraper is it takes off not too much at a time, so you can keep control of it. Mm -hmm. 
Someone did ask me about 22 fret necks, and the answer is 22 fret necks are exactly the same as 21 fret necks. I prefer the 21 frets, they're a bit more vintage, but the 22 fret neck, all it has is a little overhang that hangs over the end with an extra fret on it. The actual fitting, the length of the neck is exactly the same, so there is no difference at all. It just has this extra fret which will eventually overhang the uh, pit guard. Well, as you know, our body is a bit of a reject. At this point I was planning to put in a gag, but um, I think we'll just move on. It's got some tiny manufacturing flaws. They're not really manufacturing flaws. I guess you could say they're flaws of nature. We've got some knot holes uh, and some little holes here, and there's one on the end here as well. Now we need to fill those. Now if you go onto YouTube or the interweb in some way, uh, you'll find that there's a bit of universal advice, and that is to take some baking soda and some thin super glue, mix those together into a paste. It will fizz up and make an awful smell, so be careful. And then you take that on a spatula or a knife and you <laughs> push it into these knots. Um, it's absolutely useless. Please don't do it. Uh, it's nonsense, and I see it all the time. I am forever correcting people about the use of baking soda. It isn't a fix-all, and it's completely irrelevant in this scenario. What you need to do is when you're sanding the body down, capture some of the dust and mix that with some nitrocellulose filler or some tight bond or some other white woodworking glue. Then with that paste, push that into the floors and then sand it down. The trouble with CA is it dries dark. Don't use super glue for this because it, you'll end up with black holes. I know you've already got black holes, but we want to mask them. So let's fill them with something lighter, something wood coloured. Uh, the white wood glue mixed with sawdust will be exactly right for what we want to do. Don't use baking soda, please. Baking soda, it's the answer to everything. <laughs> So with the body all sanded and filled and the neck nicely shaped and all the frets torn out, the next thing we want to do is to put it together and get it all lined up so that everything is absolutely straight. Now in the past I've used straight edges, I had some Perspex things made with a line down the middle which worked just great, I thought, but they were bendy. The best way that I've ever managed to get this to happen is with a laser, and a laser is now my preferred method of getting these two lined up. So let's see how I do it. So this is not complicated, I just use a laser up here, but first of all I need to clamp the body uh, just to give it legs really, to lift it up so that I can move it around. The laser I use is just a simple builder's level. I just balance it on top of my vise and point it down the neck. Middle, 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 it's just deviating a little. And that is it. So once I've got that red laser line absolutely between those two screws in the centre of the bridge and then all the way down the exact centre of all the black dots in the maple neck, I'm going to lift the guitar up very carefully so that I don't move the neck and then I'm going to drill a small pilot hole into the back of the neck just to make sure that I get it in exactly the right place. So here we go. It's going to be really gentle. The body will take the weight. That's that bit done. Now we're confident that these are in exactly the right place. Welcome back to Philosophy Corner. I wanted to say something about design. Um, guitar design, in my opinion, has sort of died a little bit. It's a little bit in the doldrums. Um, every guitarist I know either plays a Tele, a Strat, or a Les Paul of some description. And I think that's uh, really strange, considering that rock guitarists tend to see themselves at the bleeding edge of creativity and, and incredibly radical and risk-taking. And yet, when it comes to musical instruments, they're just not. I mean, uh, they are incredibly conventional. So. I guess I'm encouraging you to push the boat out a little, to take a few risks and do something uniquely yours. I mean, if you're not going to do that, why don't you just go and buy a guitar from the factory? Um, and that's not what we're doing. We're building a guitar, so make it your own. Anyway, that's my 10 pence worth, so um, let's get back to the build. At the risk of sounding like a Cindy Lauper song, I'm not a conventional girl in a conventional world. I'm an unconventional guitar maker and uh, I like something that's a little bit different. I'm going to put on here an asymmetrical neck joint uh, plate. 
like that. And I'm going to trace around it with a pencil. Uh, and then I'm going to bounce all that bit off. It's radical a little bit, I suppose, for some people that feel a bit, you know, conventional. But it gives you better access to the upper frets, uh, and I think it looks cool too. And here it is, all screwed up. Uh, unfortunate turn of phrase. It's actually turned out really nicely. Um, I had to fill the original pilot hole that I made when I thought I was going to use uh, four screws in the normal configuration. But this asymmetrical joint does give you exceptional uh, access to the upper frets. And I'm really happy with that. As I say, I think it's worth doing. It's entirely your taste, but this is really working for me. Ep one done, as nobody once said. I hope you enjoyed it, plenty more to come. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Keep building. <laughs>